Hey, Brian Parker here with another exciting video. Um, we just did our question and answer conference. I'm looking at it because it's the day of the um, eclipse. Shadowy, it's shadows. So uh, that's an exciting reason to do a video. Hopefully the electricity doesn't go off. Um, we had a question on Friday with the question and answer uh, forum we did. It was quite successful. We went long. And one of the questions that just sat with me for a while was, hey, I can tell the judge is got her eye already on the, the lady that was asking the question went to a pretrial conference. And she said, I got the feeling the judge already has her eye on the uh, summary motion. Uh, when I talk about this, the name of this video is um, how to win a motion for summary disposition or judgment with a simple motion to compel. Um, so I interchange, I'm going to change interchanging summary motion, summary judgment, depending on what state you're in. So I'm going to try and I'll probably end up just saying summary motion. But how do we win a summary motion? Well, we don't wait until here it is, uh, that lady's insight and looking at the tea leaves about what's to come is what you need to do. And that happens usually at the pretrial, be it Zoom or in person. You can sometimes get a flavor just by using your ears, two ears, one mouth, uh, about where the judge is going. It doesn't mean you can't change her, but if you're with a kind of a judge to where you got that feeling, no matter what you say, she's still going to stick to, <laughs> she owes the debt, therefore why isn't she paying it? You can trip her up if she's not going to be fair because she's not being fair if she's going to that analysis of your case because that's not the analysis. The analysis is, does this company that's suing me have the right to sue me? Why is that the analysis? It's not convenient for me or for you. They have the burden of proof. So if they say they have standing to sue you and inconvenience you, they've got to ha meet the burden of proof, which is quite a burden. So all you're asking is judge, be fair, be neutral, right? You shouldn't get that tip, but thank goodness you did at the beginning of the case, which the pretrial is the beginning. So I want you to remember five things. This is beating of the summary motion starts with discovery. So discovery is just asking questions. When you ask a question, and I said this on Friday, I've said before, what is your quest? Meaning, why are you asking that question? And regardless of whether you like the judge or not, have a hill to die upon. Meaning, have it be a question that is so necessary the judge can't turn you away and you're not wasting her time and she sees the relevance and that's good if she does. Just don't waste her time. And there's a couple of ways we do that. And thirdly, but secondly, kill them with kindness. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So first of all, have a hill you can die upon. A question should be the meat of the bone. How do we decide what questions to ask? Easy. They, because remember my famous mantra, what is it? Beulah, Beulah, that's right. Use their own documents against them. So what I will do for you today, I'm going to show you I actually did what I'm about to tell you, right? A, I have a case, and I've used this case before, where the pleadings are awful. And so I went in on those pleadings. Their documents are awful. So I went in on those pleadings. I just ask a question which should be in the judge's mind and will be, what right do they have to sue you? What your question then is, why am I being sued? And sometimes the pleadings are so bad, you can put those into your questions. So each question should be a step number two towards the answer to that question. It might be, we don't have it. But if you don't ask that question, they don't get to answer. So make them answer that question. That's the genesis of what I'm about, the advice and trick I'm about to give you. Make them answer the ultimate question. In, your plea, in their pleadings and your counter affidavit, your counter affidavit is a cookbook recipe of where you're going with this. It says, they haven't met their burden of proof. They have no assignments. They're suing me improperly. They don't own the debt. There's no contract. Whatever it is that shows they have no right to sue you. The counter affidavit at the beginning, and it will follow you as a friend. 
And so your discovery requests are supporting what your affidavit is saying. So when I say create a hill you can die upon, stick to what you believe, which is in your counter affidavit, right? Don't ask nonsense questions. Um, assume that your discovery quest, your discovery questions are going to end up in a motion compel because they don't want to give you what you want. Remember, if you ask that question, now they either have to answer it or what is I learned this great word, obstificate. Oh, I can't pronounce it, but they're going to try and not answer the question. So you want that. See, you kind of turn things around. That's a positive. If they don't answer the question, then you can do a motion to compel. And that's how you win a motion for summary. Brian, how do you win a motion for summary <laughs> just because you do a silly motion to compel? Well, what happens is, and let me give you, on my uh, membership website, I will give you, I almost said Shazam, I will give you a bunch of discovery questions that I asked in this actual case, right? And there's a reason I'm giving that to you. You can use it uh, depending on what case you're on. It's a debt by a case, student loan, but it, it's just a debt by a case. That's what they all are. So I'll put that on my membership website. But really, the whole case is this motion to compel. How is that possible? Here we go. Take their response. You ask the meat of the bone. You say, where's the proof that you own this debt? Where's the assignment with my name, my account number that was assigned to you to sue? In, in the case I'm giving you, there were 10 assignments, right? It's some weird trusts, all this nonsense. I asked for all of those. Why not? If they say they have the <laughs> the burden to sue me, the burden proof met, they should have no problem. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Never happened. But how do we kill them with kindness? You send them a letter first. So you will take their responses, and I'll show you how I did that in my, motion, in my um, uh, letter. I'll show you an actual letter that I wrote. I'm not just saying it, I'm showing you. And I'll keep it in as much as I can in word for you if you wish to use it for your situation. You gotta understand, their pretzel litigation, they already know they can't prove what they claim to be true. They already know it, okay? And they're, not, and they're intellectually lazy. They don't have to, because 90% of this stuff defaults. Not with us, though. So they try and litigate around the truth. So you do this for two reasons. You send them a nice letter saying, hey, there must have been an issue. You'll see I wrote the letter. And now you tear apart their discovery responses in PDF and just cut and paste the question that you want. Hey, no, and so I, in, my, in this letter you're going to see, let me just show the letter, Shazam. And you can see I'm going, hey, uh, these requests to produce uh, questions and responses are highly non-responsive. You didn't say anything. And then I actually cut and paste what they didn't say. And then after that, I say, see, listen, all I'm asking for is two, it does two plus two equal four. You said it equals 56. Explain that. And it's in a letter. So what? Who cares? We've, we, I've had this discussion with myself, but in my videos saying where people go, Parker, why am I sending them a letter? Because the response is everything. If they respond and give you what you want, it's everything. But if they give you a non-response, which is 99.9% .9 purity, they're not going to, then you have the right to file a motion to compel. You can file a motion to compel anyway, but you want to show the judge, and that's why you're killing him with kindness. When I was in, I was away for 10 years, different schools I'm trying to pay for, and when a, 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 a customer, customer would give me crap, I would kill them with kindness. Why, yes, that steak should go back a sixth time. You are absolutely right. That burger is not medium well. You kill them with kindness. They know you're, what you're really thinking, but you're saying they can't complain that you're too nice to them. So you write a nice letter saying, here are the three things. Before I mo file a motion to compel, and here's the kicker. Give them five days to answer. So it's not like you're being unreasonable because they already had 30 or 40 days the first time they didn't answer. So it's not like you're, you're only giving them five. You're giving them five extra days beyond what the statute or the court rule gives them. 
So you, these are your hills that you die upon. And I limit it. I think in the letter I'm going to show you, or you will see on my membership website in Word, there's like four motion, uh, four requests to produce and four interrogatories. It's easy for the court to get to the bottom of it. And really, what's the bottom of it? I just said it to you. Assignments, proof of ownership, uh, why do you have a right? And they're all the same thing. Why do you have a right to sue me? And in this case, <laughs> their pleadings were so bad, they said they sold the debt to themselves. And I've said this in other cases. 11 months later, I'm still asking them, how did you sell it to yourself? And would you be so kind as to... Sh I'll let you have the right to go in. Go ahead, change it. And they don't. And then the reality is, the attorney I'm dealing with, it's just another job to him. He doesn't care. He's since moved on to a new job working <laughs> on my side now. He doesn't care. Nobody cares. But that judge will care. It can only look at the writings and the pleadings. This case was doomed from day one when in the paragraph, I think it's number four of the complaint, we sold the debt to ourselves. <laughs> you know what? I'll show it you what it says. Remember, it's the plaintiff. So the plaintiff is uh, SLM 2011-C. So Shazam, and that's pleading number four. See, the plaintiff says we got it from ourselves. <laughs> they can change that. They've been notified that several times. Even the judge has been showed it. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but they keep going on because the debt collector philosophy is you owe the debt, you owe the debt, you're a bad person. Whether it's identity theft or some other reason, they will not accept the premise, which is, is, in, is born into the marrow of plaintiff's work. If you're a plaintiff, you are suing. The marrow of plaintiff's work is you have a burden of proof. It's weird how often debt collectors will shy away from proving, just about every time, the burden of proof when the very definition of their job plaintiff is to make a showing of burden of the proof so i'll say it here's my letter and i'll go down and break down with the pdf of what they actually said so i can show the court this and i keep it limited to under 10 you how much do you need then i file when they don't respond. So I'll go, hey, you got five days, but on the sixth day, I'm gonna sue, I'm gonna do a motion compel. I gave them warning. Courts love it that you gave them. You'll hear a judge go, well, did you notify Mr. Smith that, uh, blah, 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 even though Mr. Smith knows he's the one that responded. Oh, yes, Your Honor. In fact, I wrote them a nice letter. I, I killed them with kindness, right? So now the judge is totally on your side. But guess what? You're, doing this whole thing because she, you suspect she's not on your side. So she's already on your side for the simple motion, as I said in my question and answer conference on Friday. She knows they have the burden of proof and they can't just say they own a debt. It's real easy to show someone, and there's an analogy I use um, when proving and when arguing these cases. Your Honor, I sell you a car. I can't give you a, a bill, a, a title, without my signing my name, your name, you're signing your name, the VIN number, the amount for the taxes, and you can't register that car without it. Now, if I leave that empty and I go to register the car and I have a separate piece of paper that says what it's supposed to say in the back, you know, I'm never gonna get that car registered and I can't sell it, it's the same thing. It all has to appear inside the assignment, which it never does, because it can't. So. The judge knows. And you know what? The judge doesn't even care, really, whether they can or not. It's another motion on her docket. She's not thinking about the summary judgment, but you are. So you get that order that says, plaintiff, you've got 10 days to show them the assignment. That's not so wrong, right? And so I'll ask for attorney fees, knowing I'm not going to get them. So she'll say no to the attorney fees and costs. And I want her to say that, because in her head, she's trying to remain neutral. So she gets to give them something. I didn't give him attorney fees and costs. And she'll say something like, you just cooperate. You two cooperate. But she'll sign an order saying they must sign, provide an assignment. The very genesis of your counter affidavit that says 
They don't have it. So <laughs> beginning and end of this case is the beginning is the counter affidavit. The end is that motion to compel. So now they filed the summary motion, summary judgment. You've got her court order where she signed saying you got to provide the assignment. What's the basis of their motion for summary? A motion for summary is saying, judge, there's no other facts or laws on the other party's favor. We should be granted summary motion. Do you own the debt? Yes, we do. Can you prove it? Yes, we can. Show me. Uh, uh, here, LVNV funding from Sherman, you know, some Sherman acquisitions. Okay, show me that assignment. Judge, yeah, trust us. Your Honor, I've got your order. She's gonna probably won't even remember that says they have to provide that assignment in 10 days. They blew you off, Your Honor. Now, you said I couldn't have attorney fees, <laughs> and I told you what was going to happen. And she's, if she has any compulsion, and judges do, to clean their docket, I see this happen all the time. Let's say they're really mad at me, and they intend to kill my case. I mean, you can see it. And then when I present something like that, where it shows their own words that they signed off on, they literally change. Plaintiff, how dare you in my court? And they start yelling at the other side like they were never mad at me because otherwise their order, their words don't mean anything. Courts talk through orders. Don't ever just, if the judge says something, don't ever take that as gospel. Courts talk through orders. You've got her signature saying you deserve the assignments. They can't sue you without them. They can't freaking do a summary motion. So that's how you beat a summary judgment with a little summer, uh, motion to compel, a little train that could, and you're just killing them with kindness. Remember, when you write these discovery requests, you're really writing an opportunity for the other side to say no to you and kill their own case, right? They'll call you when they suspect and go, hey, we really need to settle this case. I've had that call so many times, I just start laughing now. So remember, it's all about the counter affidavit, kill them with kindness. So you're, when you do your counter affidavit, you're doing your discovery. You're at, you, these are what you're gonna be asking, the questions. You send that letter, judges love it when you're cooperating. Be kind, hey Bob, ba 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 ba. Make sure it's the hill to die upon. So don't write 50 discovery questions and then go, hey, they didn't answer 50. Judge, she doesn't wanna know from this. Make it a couple so you make it easier to help you. Help me help you. All right, that's what happened in the question and answer conference on Friday, but it went about an hour and 15 minutes. It was fantastic. That's one of many great questions. That said on my, in my head all weekend that I did a bad job and I kept watching the same video. I'm like, eh, I could do better. I hope this makes sense. Uh, uh, probably went longer than it should have. But it's all about using their own words and paperwork against them, right? Use that counter affidavit, use that little engine that could motion to compel, and the judge won't see you coming, all right? Thank you. <laughs>